Is there a war coming in the Middle East? Are we headed toward a one-world government, a one-world religious system? Will America be attacked again? Do ancient prophetic texts warn of the time we are living in? Are we in the last days, the time of Jacob's trouble, the end of the world as we know it? And what are the increase of UFO sightings? While we may disagree as to what is causing the phenomena, we can agree that it is real, burgeoning, and not going away. Is this the coming great deception that ancient prophecy, great deception that ancient prophecy warns us about? Does time seem to be accelerating? Join me, your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, as we explore these and other riveting and stimulating topics. This is Acceleration Radio. And good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli, and it is, what, what is the date anyway? It's March 24th, live from Cuba. Live from Cuba. Not afraid to say the word Cuba. Now, my fellow Americans, ask not what you can do for your country. Okay, live from Cuba, and I'm doing the tango. Hey, I wish I had some tango music to play for you. But I don't, but I'm live. Good morning, Vietnam! I mean, that's what it seems like, seriously. Sorry, folks, I'm a little over the top. I've been in computer hell literally for the last hour um, on my other computer trying to get things working, and it ain't. Somebody gave me some malware. Can you believe the President of the United States, Brussels happens... Uh, What was it, two days ago now? Brussels happens. 34 people are blown up by Islamic extremists. By the way, I was on the uh, Hagman and Hagman show last night for a full two hours talking about what is the real, where is the real Islam? And, of course, our president says, uh, well, you know, ISIS has hijacked uh, the world, one of the world's great religions. And I, 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 I answered back and said, listen, what, where is the real face of Islam? What is the true face of Islam? Is it the Muslim Brotherhood? Is it the rebel army in Syria? Is it Bashar al-Assad and the Alawites? Is it Iranians, the Shia? Is it the, uh, the, the branch of Sunni Islam in Saudi Arabia? Is it the King of Jordan? Idea of Islam? Where is it? Where is it? In all those countries I just, just mentioned, and in other countries, we see the repression of, of Christianity and minorities. Anyone who is not a Muslim is discriminated against. Why are there no churches in Saudi Arabia? Think about that, folks. There's not one Christian church in Saudi Arabia. In fact, soldiers who go to Saudi Arabia are not allowed to bring Bibles. Now, that may have changed, but the last last I heard, they were not allowed to bring Bibles. So I'm just telling you what's going on here. What is the true face of Islam? So when, when Obama, who's dancing the tango, tells us uh, that ISIS has hijacked one of the world's great religions, where is the true face of Islam? Is it with the Iranians and the Shia branch of Islam that believe in the coming of the Mahdi and, uh, and Isa or Jesus will come with the Mahdi and they will go to Jerusalem and uh, the Mahdi will teach Jesus how to pray? That doesn't go over too well with most of the Christians that I know. That's not flying for me, folks. So is it that branch of Islam that we're supposed to look for and believe that that is the true face of Islam, that is the religion of peace, when when Iran launches two missiles last week and paints on the side of them death to Israel? <laughs> I mean, here you go. Uh, is that the true face of Islam? Hmm. What about the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt? where uh, Safwat Hagazi stands up and yells at the top of his lungs, to Jerusalem we go, martyrs in the millions. Is that the true face of Islam? Look, there are, there are Muslims in America that love this country. I mean, I get that. They, they're here. And, you know, we can't, can't get on our high horses and start looking at everybody that's wearing a headscarf, you know, as some sort of a radical. That's insane. And, and the comparison I made was going back into Nazi Germany, you know, yes, Germans were Nazis, but not all Germans were Nazis. Some Germans were Nazis, okay? But not all Germans were Nazis. A lot of people, a lot of Germans pushed back. Look at, look at Bonhoeffer pushing back against the, uh, the rising tide of not only anti-Semitism, but certainly an anti-Christian uh, doctrine coming from the Nazi party. So when Obama stands up and says something like this, there needs to be, in my opinion, some sort of a reformation in Islam. 
where the idea of strapping bombs on one person body and going into a clouded market or restaurant or bank or bus becomes abhorrent but that's not what we see and it's become bothersome and i know in this country you know you can't talk about these things it's not well, LA, it's not politically correct to be talking about this la you just have to calm down here and uh, have another candlelight vigil that's what we need more candlelight vigils maybe if we reach out with some candlelight vigils this will stop ain't ever going to stop it's not going to stop. All the candlelight vigils in the world are not going to bring back the 30 or 30 plus people who were blown the smithereens in Brussels. It's not going to change. It's time to act. Frankly, I don't know how to act. I don't know what to do. This administration has trouble even calling it radical Islam and instead tries to backpedal by saying ISIS has hijacked one of the world's great religions. Okay, so if it's not ISIS, Mr. President, what about Hamas? What about Hezbollah? What about the Muslim Brotherhood? What about the vitriol and the vituperative remarks coming from Iran? What about that? What about the madrasas in Saudi Arabia that teach hate towards Israel, towards the Jews, that constantly tell us that the Jews are the products or the offspring of pigs and apes? What about that, Mr. President? I agree with, with the Donald. I agree with, Don, with Donald Trump when he states that maybe we should close the borders from any country that, that promulgates terrorism, period. And I agree. What's wrong with that? That's not being a racist. That's protecting our borders. What about protect, closing the southern border? Absolutely. What about monitoring some of, the, some of the mosques in the United States that preach hate? There was a tape that came out of London, the Grand Mosque in London, that undercover woman in a full burqa, and <clears throat> she asked a question because the women teach the women. So she asked a question of the female, woman, the woman that was teaching, and she said, what about if someone decides to leave, um, leave Islam? And the woman who was teaching at the Grand Mosque in London, and you can go on YouTube and see this for yourself, basically stated, kill them. Just like that. Just kill them. In other words, you can't leave Islam. That's a death sentence. So there needs to be some sort of reformation. There's a woman, I talked about this last week, I forget her name, from Saudi Arabia originally. I think she's living in Qatar, which is much more liberal than Saudi Arabia. She's not wearing a burqa or a headscarf or anything, and she's, you know, she looks like a, a Western woman uh, or what, she, you know, what most, most of us are used to when we see uh, women, you know, our wives, and go to the mall or whatever. Uh, that's what she looks like. She's got her hair is well done, and she's 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 a, a, a good looking woman, and she's got makeup on. Well, in in certain sections like in Saudi Arabia, you can't do that. The fact that she's showing her hair in itself uh, is an affront to many Muslim men. She would be called a whore in certain in certain areas in certain sections of Islam, and that's fine. I mean, they can do whatever they want to do. I'm not living there, and I'm not trying to impose. Um, my idea of, of freedom on them. But when they come over here or when they go into Europe, what do they want? They want Sharia. And now we've got all the gropings that are happening in Europe as a million Muslims come into the country and basically are changing the cultural fabric of that continent. So the Saudi Arabian, the expat Saudi Arabian female, makes a case. What if Christians came to our country and told us that we were infidels, and that unless we converted, we would die. What if Christians came to the country, strapped bombs around their, themselves, and blew, blew us up in our markets or schools or, or buses? What if Christians came to this country and started shooting people with AK-47s, yelling, you know, Jesus is Lord? What would we think? And she makes a very pithy argument, and frankly, I agree with her. It's wacky. When, when you flip it, it becomes crazy. It really becomes crazy. And this is why there needs to be a reformation in Islam. If it really is a religion of peace, then why are these the only people that are doing this stuff? No other group that I'm aware of is running around blowing people up in airports or walking into nightclubs with AK-47s or automatic weapons and killing scores and scores of people. It was a massacre. Absolutely a massacre. And that's, what, 40 days ago? And here we got the, the, the bombing in Brussels? And then ISIS has the gall and the nerve to say, pay the jiza, which is the tax. If you want the bloodstead to stop, you pay ISIS. 
That's what the caliphate is about, and they allow you to live there. That's not freedom. That's submission. And if, if Europe is stupid enough to do that, then that's the fall of, 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 of the Western uh, ideology that's been in place for a thousand years. It's gone. It's gone. So that's what we're, that's what we're, you know, facing here in the aftermath of Brussels. And again, I want to stress, folks, that in no way am I sanctioning any type of backlash against Muslims in our country. Many of these Muslims that are here love this country. They do. They love the country. The problem is embedded with those Muslims who are here, there are those who don't love the country, who want jihad who want to blow themselves up, who want to kill as many Americans as possible. Look at the shooters in San Bernardino. How many other sleeper cells do we have? That's the problem. That's the problem. Moving on, Fukushima Ground Zero, they've lost the fuel rods. That's right, folks. Coming to you live from Cuba, where I'm doing a tango. <laughs> Vote for Jib. Um, Fukushima's ground zero, they lost the fuel rods. Reactor four, and all of this, it's now what, four or five years out since the Fukushima disaster? The Japanese government assured us that everything was okay. TEPCO said everything's fine. The fuel rods, they don't know where they are. They burned through the containment shell, and they're on their way to China. That's basically what's going on here. I'm laughing only because I don't know what else to do. This is serious stuff. I mean, really, really serious stuff. And it's not getting any better. They make these robots that go in, and some of the robots um, go in underwater because the entire reactor is, some, of the, some parts of the reactor, specifically where the fuel, re, fuel rods were, is all underwater. And they're trying to cool the fuel rods, but they don't know where they are. They've lost them. Uh, so the whole thing is, is the cat's out of the bag. So they make these robots... And the robots go in, and it's so hot, and I mean literally hot, that the wires melt and the robots go dead before they can do anything. And it takes them months to create another robot that they, they, they create specially to go in and try to find the fuel rods. Meanwhile, the fuel rods continue to melt their way through to China. That's what we're looking at here. And yet you hear, word, you hear nothing about it in this country. Nothing about it at all. Is it contaminating the Pacific Ocean? I think so. Certainly certain parts of it. It goes right back into the days of chaos. There's some, you know, I, I, I posted a, uh, YouTube is hysterical because when you post on YouTube, it opens everything up. And by the way, we're, we're getting really close. I think we're about 100 people away from 10,000 followers. Uh, at the first of this year, we had like 2,300 and now we're up to 10,000 in just a few short months. So we're definitely growing an audience. And folks, remember, Politics, Prophecy, and the Supernatural Report, ppsreport.com. We are also on VTM, Victory Television Network, out of Little Rock. It's our first television station that we're actually on. And we uh, were on that show uh, on Thursday nights. I think it's at 8 o'clock um, Central Time in Little Rock. We're on at 8 o'clock. And we're really excited about that. And we've had a lot of good feedback to it. And we're showing the same show again because it is Passover week and Resurrection Sunday, of course, is this Sunday. And we're showing a whole 30-minute episode uh, report on PPS Report on the Shroud of Turin. If you can see it, if, you, if you're not near Little Rock, you can just go on our YouTube account um, and you can watch it for yourself on the Shroud or just go to ppsreport.com and it's up there and watch it there. You can also... Look at the latest update on the, the real, very real threat of an electromagnetic pulse weapon, which we did a few days ago, and that's been posted. So we're really excited about it, and, uh, you know, our numbers are growing. We're up to just just under 10,000. My goal is by this time next year we'll have over well over 100,000 viewers on YouTube. And, by the way, we are about to go on Roku. So uh, we're, we're working it here, folks. We're, we're working basically seven days a week trying to keep up with everything, trying to get the content out to the folks, um, and we're, we're excited about it. I just want to give you a quick update here about the, uh, here the Watchman Conference. It was absolutely incredible, 850 people, uh, just amazing. I just, and I want to draw your attention to some of the nonsense that went on 
that I think it's I think it's okay to talk about it now. I was contacted by a uh, an individual on Wednesday night telling me that there was a bomb scare uh, that the FBI had received threats to the Hero the Watchman conference, and of course I was take greatly taken aback by this, and uh, we we went to the conference anyway. We weren't going to be deterred just because of threats. And that that morning, the FBI w- w- basically were in the house. Uh, we didn't know why they were there on Wednesday, only that there were threats. We were wondering. Some of us thought that maybe because of some of us have said some uh, pretty pithy remarks regarding Islam. And I just spent the last 10 minutes talking about what is the real face of Islam. And I'm not trying to bash Islam. I'm trying to say, show us the moderates. Show us the moderates. Give us the moderates. But we now realize that that all of these threats came from one in particular individual whom I will not mention at this time. I will call this guy out eventually because he needs to be called out because instead of going to the conference organizers, Mike and Jeannie, he didn't do that. He, he notified law enforcement. I have already gone to him in the biblical mandate going to him. If a brother has something against you, I went to him one-on-one and said, you know, why didn't you go to Mike? You know, why did you, uh, alert the police and go to the FBI with this thing. And he wrote back talking about uh, credible witnesses. And he had many people who had dreams and visions. And so I wrote him back and said, who are these many people? Show us the emails. Let me question them. Because frankly, I don't believe there are many people. And why did they seek you out and not the organizers of the conference? This, in my opinion, was a false prophecy. These are, are trolls. These people have an ax to grind. There was an agenda to try to shut down the conference but they didn't succeed. In the meantime, folks, and you need to understand this, scores of people were born again and spirit-filled at that conference. Scores of people got baptized on Sunday morning. The conference was a great success. Hats off to Mike and Jeannie and to all the speakers who were there and contributed. Russ Dizdar, absolutely passionate on Friday night with Paul Paul McGuire spoke for two hours. Absolutely in your face. An incredible presentation. Russ Dizdar stood up and just and and preached and educated and and pointed out uh, what is going on. I mean, the, the list of speakers there w- was just absolutely incredible. And um, all I can tell you, folks, is the conference was basically sold out. Uh, there there was no uh, issues there at all. There there was no violence or or the threat. Mean, but in the meantime, there was a very heavy police force there. Um, that was surrounding the conference. There were there were two armed armed officers at the conference at all times. At all times, there was also a tower in the parking lot, which which is like a observation post, which goes up probably I don't know 30, 40 feet, which can give them a bird's eye view of the entire area. And so these people were law enforcement was there and force, and of course uh, the FBI were, were also nosing around. We'd like to tip our hats and thank them for their protection. But the problem is, is that these, the person who created this, excuse me, let me cough here off. Mike, give me a second. The person who created this, um, in my opinion, is a false prophet. And he should have gone to Mike and Jeannie and to the conference organizers and allowed Mike and Jeannie to, to question him to question some of these people who are having, quote-unquote, visions and words from the Lord. Well, if they're words from the Lord, why didn't anything happen? That's the problem. And, of course, they'll say, well, you know, people prayed, and that's why it was averted. Nonsense. Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. These are false prophets. These are people who who claim the mantle that there's some sort of a, a biblical giant or they fly around the universe with Jesus and they have more visions and encounters than all the people in the new and old Testament together combined seriously. And I would, I would, I would say with all due respect to these folks that the spirit that is, that they're contacting is not Yeshua is not Jesus. It's a false Jesus. They're being duped. The whole new age gets into all this. I can talk to new agers who have encounters with who they think is Jesus. It's not, it's an imposter. And that's what's going on here. It's a ruse. It's a canard. These people are deceived. Greatly deceived. I'll be in Burnsville April 1st to the 3rd. And you can go on uh, the blog, lamarzuli.wordpress.com and check that out. Um, I believe there's going to be upwards of three to 400 people will be there for that conference. 
And of course, April 27th to the 30th, the Supernatural Crossroads Conference in Indiana. So both of those links are up uh, at um, our our blog, lamarjuli.wordpress.com. And you can uh, hopefully, if you're in the area, you can, you can check that out. Our new CD is available called Communion. Let me just <clears throat> take a shameless plug here. Received your audio CD of the music today. It has been a blessing. It has helped my depression greatly. It is helping my discomfort with Parkinson's. The music reminds me of one of my favorite musicians. A couple of songs remind me of Phantom of the Opera. Great music, LA. Glad I was able to purchase it. Dr. Lou. Here's another one from Dame. I just received my copy of Communion and love it. It's now part of my sanctuary music, the praise and worship I keep playing in our sanctuary 24-7 and will remain so. Thank you so very much for recording this and many blessings of the Lord for it, keeping you and Peggy lifted in prayers. Folks, I got to tell you, my wife, when I've been married for like 32 years this coming September, okay? So she's, she knows my music better than anyone. And on the way to the airport a few weeks ago, when we just got finally, finally got the CDs, I popped the CD in our player. And our, our car's 10 years old. And uh, we were driving at the airport, and she listened to the whole thing. And she just turned to me, and she said, it is so peaceful. It just gives you a, a, a feel. It brings you into worship. It gives you a feeling of, of, of just peace. And that's what we're getting. And that was the whole point of this. Be still and know that he is God. And hopefully when you listen to communion, it will create that atmosphere so people can get closer. And that's the whole point of doing it. I want to read something to you. This is from a blog, folks, that I posted uh, a while back, actually, March 20. Um, actually, the first blog, the first time I posted this was uh, October 4th, 2013. So it gives you an idea. It's, it's pretty much three years ago. And let me read this before we go to break. I have a warning of the coming jihad for years now. And for most part, for the most part, it has fallen on deaf ears. It is coming here. The jihadis are coming here, and we will see more of these attacks. In the meantime, another candlelight ceremony is not going to stop the jihadis. Okay? So here it is from 2013. As they strolled through the Westgate Mall, guns strapped to their torsos, the the attackers chatted on their cell phones while they sprayed bullets at terrified shoppers. Ruthless and nonchalant, they randomly gunned down shoppers at the upscale mall in the Kenyan capital. This is a few years ago in Africa, in Kenya. At one point, they took turns to pray, removing shoes to perform the ritual, washing in a room stacked with boxes. They bowed down in Islamic prayer, taking a break from incessant gunfire. This terrorist attack happened far from the shores of America. It was conducted by radical Islamists, jihadists, who mercilessly cut short the lives of at least 67 people. They conducted the attack with precision and cunning even stopping to pray to their God before killing another innocent bystander. So why am I running with this story now? Yesterday, a second journalist was beheaded by ISIL or ISIS in Iraq. The Islamists cut the head off this man and ended his life in a very gruesome way. This is the face of radical Islam. This is the face of jihad. This is what radical Islamists bring to the table. As an article I posted several weeks ago stated, radical Islam is the monster in the room. Let's look at the numbers. There are roughly 1.4 billion Muslims in the world. If only 1% of them are radicalized, that would be 1.4 million terrorists. The numbers are higher. But for the sake of erring to the conservative side, I'm going with only 1%. Our malls are unprotected. Millions of people visit them daily. And on the weekends, many families spend time together there. They are beautiful. And in many cases, the architecture is stunning. There are waterfalls, quiet pools, statues, and other art. Our standard fare. Giant mobiles slowly turn overhead. Food courts boast multinational dishes from the four corners of the world. People think the mall is a safe place to go. Think again. I believe the Islamists will target our malls. They are soft targets. And if they strike, they will cause panic and fear, which is exactly what the jihadists want. There are 47,835 malls in America at the moment. All of them are sitting ducks, easy prey, for those who seek to kill us. When, not if this happens here, God forbid, what is our next step as a nation? What will we do to ensure it doesn't happen again? Folks, I got to tell you, our morals, our mall schools, sporting events are all soft targets. We must take action and do that soon by deporting any and all people from Middle Eastern countries who support terror groups, period. This is written in 2013 
What is Donald Trump saying? What is Donald Trump saying ex exactly that? The fact that three churches were spray painted and, and on that basically um, Islamic slogans were spray painted onto three Indiana churches. So we're going up there. They will have security there. Uh, but look, folks, it's, this is not a good thing. It's not. And, and the fact that it's, it happened in Brussels and it happened in Paris, there's no guarantee <clears throat> that it won't happen here. And it already has happened here. Look at San Bernardino. Look at the Boston bombings, which I have trouble with, actually. But look at, look at what happened up in Boston. <clears throat> look at uh, Major Hassan, Fort Hood, while screaming Allah Akbar, he jumps on the table and kills 13 people, including a pregnant woman. So it's got to stop. And there's going to be pushback in this country. Our political leaders need to push back. When Hillary Clinton stands up and says, we need to open our borders and we need to embrace all this nonsense, she's, she's a lunatic, in my opinion, with all due respect. That argument is one of lunacy. That will not work. That will not work. When, when we look at the lunacy of the left, the liberal hate speech, and it's there. When we get people like um, the DNC chairman, who comes on camera and starts and starts talking about how Hillary fighting for us. That's her slogan, fighting for us. Well, she didn't fight too well for us in Benghazi. And this whole thing with the classified emails, hopefully is going to derail her, her presidency, her candidacy. She is the chosen one. And right now, everyone who runs against her, according to national polls, she beats Trump and she beats Cruz. The only candidate who can beat her head to head is Kasich. Kasich is a Washington insider. No one wants the guy. This is, why they, this is why the backlash in this country. This is why Trump is surging at the polls. Most Americans have had it absolutely up to their eyeballs with the same old nonsense. This is why Jeb Bush couldn't get to first base, couldn't win anything, because people were tired of the same old talking points that worked 25 years ago. It ain't going to work anymore. We want real answers. And when we have a president who tangos in Argentina, the world's going to hell in a handbasket. The president tangos, and by the way, he brings two jets down there, two Air Force Ones down there, while he's sightseeing and having a great time and then telling us ISIS has hijacked the religion of peace. He offers no solution to the problem. It'd be very interesting to see in the coming days ahead what Europe actually does in regard to the million refugees which have poured into that continent and the hundreds of thousands more that are continuing to come in to the country, to the countries that are there. Many of these countries are now living literally in a police state. There are no-go zones where you cannot go. Police are afraid to go to these zones in London and in different parts of Paris and in different parts of Germany. It's got to stop, folks. For those of us who love freedom and love democracy, you're listening to Acceleration Radio. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli. We'll get back with your questions on the other side of the break. Thanks for listening, folks. My God is greater than I could ever explain. The love of my Lord goes well beyond what this world can even contain. No greater love is this, my friends, who willingly took our place and died to pay the price of sin. It is Christ's love I embrace. Christ's love goes beyond what I can tell. His love reaches way beyond the stars. May His love surround you even now and take you away from hell. King 
kingdoms come and kingdoms fall, and still his mercy remains. He is king of kings forevermore, in his glory he reigns. That we may be reconciled to God and pardoned from our sins, as the battle rages for our souls. Jesus Christ wins. Christ's love goes beyond what I can tell. His love reaches way beyond the stars. May His love surround you even now and take you away from hell. My heavenly Father's love endures. From this I am sure. To heal us here with the same power secure that raised up Jesus of Nazareth after three days in the grave, who prepares a place in heaven now for those who truly forgave. Christ's love goes beyond what I can tell, his love reaches way beyond the stars. Love surround you even now to take you away from hell. trying to uh, keep the content up as a watch person, as a watch man. Uh, this is what I do 24-7. Let's get into your questions. Uh, this is from Mark and Connie. Mark Hinton in Clarion, Iowa. Uh, LA, trust you are safe. Heard news reports of wildfires around Malibu. This goes back to February. Uh, that, that, that fire was put out almost instantaneously, Mark. Thanks so much for writing. Appreciate it. Uh, they were all over that thing. Thank God the wind wasn't up. That morning, it was like two miles an hour, so there was essentially no wind, and they were able to get that thing under control. It burned a few acres, not so bad. So here's a question uh, from Mark. How did the spy send into the promised land, and we saw the Nephilim there? Had they experiences with them in Egypt? Nefertiti and the headdresses we see in pictures. Was that covering a Nephilim skull? 
Well, here's here's the deal in in my part, uh, in in my in my opinion. Uh, the headdressers that we see in the pictures, in my in my opinion, yeah, they're either emulating the elongated skull, or uh, they're 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 covering the elongated skull. And when you when you say how did they know that the nephilim were there, this is common knowledge, in my opinion, that when Moses is writing about all this, when he's writing all this in what becomes the Torah, he's it's being dictated. And remember, Moses is writing hundreds of years after Abraham. And there is no law at this point. When Abraham's alive and, and the angels appear to him, there's no law. There's no Torah. There's no Le Le Leviticus or Numbers or Genesis or Deuteronomy. It's not there. It's, it hasn't been, it's not down in the book. And yet Abraham <clears throat> knows about the Nephilim, about the, the giant tribes in that area. And that's just fascinating to me. So... In, in the oral tradition, let me cough. In the oral tradition and get a slurp, these, these stories are being handed down. That's how they know who the Nephilim are. Um, I would say this, that even from the flood, those stories are handed down from Noah and his sons, generation to generation to generation. This was important that people understood what happened to Noah. And it's handed down from father or grandfather to son. This is what's so fascinating about the book that we carry, Shameless Plug for, for Chief Joseph Riverwind. That's what the old ones say, which are, which are these stories that Joseph has gotten a hold of. And it's, these stories have been handed down, in some cases, for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe even thousands of years, literally, from the old ones down to the young ones. And these, these, these people in the tribe, these children are chosen at a very early age, and they're told the stories, and they have to recite them verbatim. And this is how information is, is kept intact and handed down from one generation to another. That's what the old ones say. If you're interested in that book, it's a fascinating read. I think I read it in one or two sittings. I'm leaning to one sitting. Fascinating book. That's what the old ones say, Chief Joseph Riverwind. And his wife, the lovely Dr. Laura Lynn Riverwind, also assisted uh, in creating that wonderful tome. If you're interested in that, you can go to my uh, website, lamarzuli.net, and, and, and get a copy of it. I think you'll find it interesting. So that's, Mark, in my opinion, that's how they know the Nephilim are there. They know, they know about the Nephilim from the oral tradition, which is handed down, which is handed down to them. And so when they go in the land, they go, oh, my gosh, you know, I, I can't believe what we're looking at that. So there you go. Uh, this is from Matthew Scott. Hi, Ellie. I've listened to you for a few years now and always took some away some great information. Admittedly, I'm so confused how Christians are being duped with this Trump craze. What part of this man's life represents our beliefs and values? He's still for Planned Parenthood. He's for a single-payer health plan system. Brags about sleeping with married women. Said he it said he'd sleep with his daughter if he if if it weren't his daughter. I'm disgusted by him. How do you and other Christian leaders like Jerry Falwell support him? Sorry, I'm just frustrated and confused about this election. We need to run to God, not a demigod like tribe. Trump, look, let me ask you something, guys. When you hop on an airplane and you're flying from point A to point B, do you uh, question the pilot to see if he's a Christian? What if he's a Mormon? What if you have a Hindu pilot or a Muslim pilot? Are you going to fly with them? Oh, he's not born again. I'm not going to fly. Oh, I can't do that. Well, I mean... I get it. And look, W, George W. Bush told us that he was a Christian. And I don't know the man's heart. I have no idea. But what, what unchristian-like things did they do? The Afghan war, thousands of people killed in the Afghan war, the, the trillion-dollar opium harvest on a yearly basis, and then we've got the absolute quagmire of Iraq. Why did we go in there? And then at the last, the last year of his presidency, W tells us that it doesn't matter who you pray to, whether you're a Jew, Christian, or, or Muslim, it all goes to the same pers person. It all goes to the same God. That's crazy. That's not what we believe. I don't particularly like Donald Trump. What I mean by that is he's bombastic. He's a bully in some ways. I get that. The alternative is Hillary Clinton. 
Trump, this is what Trump has going for him. And this is the reason why he's ahead in the polls. This is the reason why he's the party, maybe the party's nominee. This is the reason why I did a, a, a whole uh, um, watch your back, you know, stay safe, Mr. Trump, on ppsreport.com. He wants to close the border, which needs to be done. W told us, we're going to build a fence on the border. Going to keep a terrorist over there so we don't have to fight him over here. Guess what? We're fighting them over here. We're fighting them over here. San Bernardino, Major Hassan. They're already over here. Need to build a southern wall. He's the only candidate who's really talking about that, who is really tough on, on, on border, on closing the borders. And Hillary goes, you know, we got to keep our borders open. Thank you, Hillary. You are clueless, my dear. Why doesn't Hillary just spend um, a weekend in Nogales? Let's, let's, you know, I'll pay for it, okay? Seriously. We'll put her into a Hilton. If there's a Hilton in Nogales, Hillary, I'm, 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 I'm calling you out. Spend a weekend in Nogales. Walk around the town after dark. How does that sound? Feel safe? You see, if the politicians would actually go down the southern border and see the nonsense that the people in America and Arizona and Texas actually live with, maybe they would change their tune, but they don't do that. They stay in their limousines and their three martini lunches inside the Beltway and have a good time and yuck it up. Meanwhile, the rest of us are dealing with this stuff. So Trump is, is gaining because he's talking about closing the southern border, which needs to be done. That's why Sheriff uh, uh, Joe Arparo endorsed Trump. Arparo knows what he's up against, as, as does law enforcement all down on the southern border. They're living it. They're living the dream down there, folks. They're watching the people come in. They're watching the drugs come in. They're seeing the tunnels. Are you aware that more people have been killed in the drug wars in Mexico than in the entire Iraqi campaign? Are you aware of that? That's how nutso it is. And now we're talking about doing a mass exorcism in Mexico. The drug, the drug lords run the country, make no mistake about it. A female mayor was, was sworn in two hours later. She's cut down by the, by the drug cartels. There is a movie on Netflix, and you need to be careful when you watch it. But it's called Cartel Land. You know, pray up and hold on to your hat if, you, if you're going to watch it. And it's nauseating, absolutely nauseating. But it paints a very realistic fi- picture of what is going on over there. And, you know, people need to get out of the bubble and understand where the heck we are and how far down the rabbit hole we are. This is from Regina. Hello, Mr. Marzulli. I was just listening to your interview on the Moore Show. You referenced a verse about the heavens being rolled up like a scroll. It brings to mind a movie theater screen being rolled up at the end of a movie. It would be so strange if it turned out we were looking at living through a projection, holographic in space that could be rolled up like a movie screen. There was another verse that says we are seated in the heavenlies in Christ Jesus. One of my favorites, by the way, Regina. He already sees us. Could it be that we really are seated in the heavenlies, experience this life as a training ground for eternity, learning to choose good, the Lord Yeshua, and reject evil? Then we have nothing to fear because we are safe in and with the Lord. Something my mind will ponder. Well, Regina, thanks for writing in. Look, it says we are already seated in the heavenlies. Now unto him who was able to keep us from falling and to present us with joy, with exceeding joy in his presence. We're already seated with him. Don't ask me how that works. Don't ask me how he rolls up the universe like a scroll, but I know he does it. And that sounds crazy to people. Oh, well, that has to be metaphor. No, it's not. How do you think he created all this stuff? He spoke it into existence. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God. The world was with God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were created by him, and nothing that was made was made without him, period. Thank you. He spoke everything into existence. Jesus, Yeshua, Jesus Christos in the Greek, spoke and said, let there be light, and behold, there was light. Here we are, and we're going back to him. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all die, but at the last trump, those of us who are dead in Christ will rise first. And then those who are remain will rise and greet the Lord in the air and be with him forevermore. What about that don't we understand? That is the harpazo, the snatching away. That's literal. It's not metaphor. And the only way out of this mess may be up. And I'm bully, bully for it. I'm all for it, folks. I could care less. 
if I spend another day here. The only reason, like, like Paul, I'm here to do a job, and I'm doing it, Father, the best as I know how. And I, I pray that when I, when I finally do pass, I will hear, well done, my, my good and faithful servant. Folks, I got to tell you, to hear the Watchman Conference, you have no idea, no idea how many people came up to my wife and I and thanked us for what we do and how our ministry and, 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 and the Watcher series and Acceleration Radio and all the interviews has impacted their life. We heard this over and over and over and over again at the conference. How watching videos or reading books like the Cosmic Chess Match or Days of Chaos or any of the uh, of, of our products brought them closer to the Lord. And if that sounds like a sale pitch, you got a hard heart because I'm not trying to sell anything here. I'm just telling you the feedback that we got. One one woman just burst into tears, thanking us because it brings her closer to the Lord. It it righted her walk, and that's what she needed. I love it. And we got to take part in that. All glory to the king. Cast my crown before the king of the universe. Absolutely all day long. Give him the glory. Because 32 years ago, I was a drug-taking, fornicating, guru-worshipping, occult-practicing pagan. That's who I was. And when I gave my life to him 32 years ago, I had no idea the adventure he would take me on. And, folks, it has been an absolute wild ride, and it ain't over yet. Watchers 10 is in, the, is in the works. Watchers 10 is cutting edge. Watchers 10 in our new book, Nephilim Hybrids, will blow your mind. Folks, it's blowing my mind, and I'm doing it with Rick. Richard Shaw and I have spent a lot of time, a lot of interviews. I'll give you, I'll give you a hint. I'll give you a little teaser. We interviewed George Norrie today for Watchers 10. He'll be on the show. The stuff we have in Watchers 10 is so cutting edge, so in your face, and I think it answers some questions that we've all been, been, been asking in the last several years. Is it conclusive? No. You be the judge, though, when you look at this, and you can see where we take you and what we're talking about. Pre-sales will be up soon. We're not doing it yet. Hopefully it'll be out sometime in June. We'll see. I'm sure I'll be talking about the new book, Nephilim Hybrids, and also Watchers 10 at the July conference at Prophecy Watchers uh, in Colorado Springs. And that's going to be a blockbuster conference. By the way, folks, that conference is completely sold out. You can get live streaming. Go to prophecywatchers.com, prophecywatchers.com. Sign up for the live streaming. But there's going to be at least 1,000 people there. It is going to be an absolute zoo. The lineup is incredible. I can't wait to be there. This is from Robin. What, in your opinion, are Bigfoots? Could they possibly be the Nephilim? Robin, that's what we think they are, in my opinion. There's a Bigfoot researcher. His name is Ron Moorhead. He accompanied us on two of our trips down to Peru. He uh, weighs in on Watchers 8, where he talks about seeing the, the size of a footprint over about 28 inches long, which is huge for a footprint high in the Sierras. He believes, as I do, that, that Big Feet or Bigfoots are Nephilim. That's what we think they are. That's what we think they are. And, of course, that is incredibly unsettling if it's true. But that's what we think. Ron believes that they are. I believe that they are. Very, very strange. Very, very strange. This is from Charlene. Uh, hi there, Mr. Marzulli. I have a quick question. Do you think possibly that the hybrids and giants are going to be participating in the Battle of Armageddon? And that is why the enemy is trying to breed so many of his serpent seed. Thank you, Char. Absolutely, Charlene. Uh, I think that we will see uh, hybrid beings. We'll see giants. Uh, again, I point you to what is coming in Watchers 10, what is coming in my new book, Nephilim Hybrids. I think, I think it's, gonna, it's blowing my mind, and I'm the guy writing the book, and Richard Shaw and I are the guys that, that are doing Watchers 10 film, and we're blown away by what we got. Uh, tomorrow we're having lunch with a very interesting person discussing all of this. We're going where the evidence takes us. And uh, we've got some very interesting testimonies, which I think you'll find absolutely fascinating. I know we have. So, yeah, I think the Battle of Armageddon is, is not only that, but the kings of the earth gather together. Read Psalm 2, Why Do the Nations Rage? The nations coalesce and come together, and they are pointing their weapons up 
because they want to kill the rider on the white horse, and that's not going to happen. And the armies of heaven, read Revelation 19, which is fast becoming my favorite chapter in the entire book. The armies of heaven are there, and we ride in with the rider on the white horse, Yeshua, HaMashiach, Jesus, the Messiah, Iezu Christos, Jesus, the anointed one. We ride back with him from heaven on flying white horses, Call me crazy, folks. Read Revelation 19. You tell me. The horses fly because they're coming in for a landing. And those horses are ours. That's the gift from the Father to each of us who ride into the battle. We get to keep those horses. I can't wait for my flying white horse. I can't wait for it. Are you kidding me? What could be more fun than a flying white horse? And I'm in my glorified body. I have no sin nature anymore. It's not there. No more sin nature. That's where we're headed. That's the promise. When you see these things begin to happen, look up for I am returning. That's what it says. When you see, what, what does he talk about? The wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, troublesome times. When you see these things happen, look up because my return is imminent. I'm going to return. I'm coming back. That should excite us, not make us fearful. We need to pray for those who have been disillusioned to think that they have to kill people for their religion. We need to pray for them. We need to pray for them. Folks, that's all the time I have for you listening to Acceleration Radio. I am your intrepid host, L.A. Marzulli on the Fringe. Radio Network. Hopefully I'll see you in North Carolina and then in Indiana a little later in the month. Thanks for listening, folks. And remember, I'll see you either on the air or in the air. Good night, everybody.